of those five service members killed, as we've reported, was from Wisconsin. And joining me now is Wisconsin Republican Congressman Sean Duffy, a member of the House Committee on the Budget. Uh, Congressman, I'm not ascribing blame any place other than to the entire system here. Uh, how do you respond to the mother of Corporal Collins? Cor uh, first off, yeah, first off, um, my heart uh, and prayers go out to the families uh, who have lost uh, loved ones in battle. Uh, and I am so grateful for the ultimate sacrifice uh, these uh, young individuals have made on behalf of our country. Um, as uh, we've talked this morning, we are going to work through this week uh, 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 a mini CR that would help with this funding. Uh, Duncan Hunter, as you mentioned, had indicated that uh, this is in the discretion of the government. Uh, if they disagree, we will work this week the to Pentagon make sure this funding. disagrees with that. Right. So, so if they disagree, we'll work through a mini CR that will take care of these families but who have lost loved ones. That is not the intent I mean, the uh, larger the point, shutdown. though, Congressman Duffy, is these mini-CRs, mini-continuing resolutions, re resolutions, that's the whole question of, you know, taking little pieces of the government. The issue is not that this is a small matter, it's a very big matter, but so is the matter of the kids in Head Start. So is the problem of the single moms uh, who aren't getting food stamps and, and aren't getting their help. You know, so down the road are the survivors' benefits, and that fund is going to run out in weeks, yeah. if not months. And so we, yeah, so as you it, can't uh, take this piecemeal, Congressman. You know, isn't the issue that someone has to sit down and figure out what to do about the stalemate that has well, led you, you to hit, this? You, you, you hit the nail on the head. I mean, and the president has said, "I won't sit at the table." Well, Harry Reid said, "I won't negotiate." He said to, he and, said to the and, speaker and, and, today on the phone, according to the White I House, "I won't negotiate." He said that he will negotiate and negotiate a lot of things that you all want, tax reform, entitlements, well, that he will negotiate once the threat of the government shutdown and of the debt default is not hanging over their heads. And, that's what he said. Andrew, Andrew, that's ridiculous. And I don't know, I mean, you, I think you said you were, you've been uh, through 18 shutdowns. Yeah. I don't know if you've seen a president that has come and said, I'm not going to negotiate. I mean, this is historic that a president says, I'm not going to sit at the table. As a guy that's uh, the 10th of 11 kids, families work through problems by talking and communicating, so too does the government. And you're well aware that all we've asked for is that the president and the administration join us in Obamacare, the American people and, and Congress, and that individuals um, and families be treated just like big business. That's what they're holding out for. And I think, I mean, even, even this morning. Him. That's, not, that's a non-negotiable demand. Why not sit down and negotiate over entitlement? reform, sure. which is something that you all have been demanding, and that he so, has offered in his initial budget. You're, that, you're putting but, but, on the but, table a non-negotiable demand. Listen, that he's, that, is it non-negotiable that uh, he's not going to enter Obamacare and he's going to say, I get my gold-plated health care plan, but uh, I want members of Congress and the rest of America to be in Obamacare? That is, that's non-negotiable? Come on. That's not reasonable. I mean, one, one issue that we have is the media won't even ask the question about why are you treating families different than big businesses? You need John Stewart on Comedy Central to ask Secretary Sebelius, hey, why won't you treat these two equally? And she can't answer it. I mean, that's how pathetic I think news reporting has become when we won't ask tough questions to the administration. Well, we've I asked questions up, to I'll both take sides. All, uh, that, that's well, not fair. Uh, do you ask that question, Andrea? We have, ask we the question. have asked that question, and so, the, the, the basic why, point why, why is why that... Do you want, why do you want your own health care and you won't join us in Obamacare? That question I haven't seen anybody ask on MSNBC. Please ask it, because they don't have a good, they don't have a good answer for it. Well, I think the response, to would be, uh, the response that Kathleen Sebelius gave to John Stewart was, if we had ha gotten what we wanted, which was a sil single-payer plan, uh, this wouldn't be the problem. <laughs> That's right. You, you say, I think, I think this is what they would say, but you don't know what they would say because you haven't asked. And that's one of the problems we have here. But I think in regard to negotiating issues, Andrea, I, I think we can sit at the table and go, okay, well, if these ones are off the table, what is on the table, Mr. President, as we move towards uh, well, the debt limit negotiation? And he would say, well, let's talk. Maybe it's going to be entitlement reform. Maybe it's tax reform. We'll have all those conversations, but when he says, you have to give me what I want, I'm not going to talk to you, I think America looks at that and goes, I understand there's divided government, people are, are, are hard on both sides, but I expect them to talk to each other and work through their differences and make it work. This is and about, that's not happening now, Andrea. With all due respect, this is about military death benefits to kids, to 19-year-old yeah. kids who have died in Afghanistan and who are not returning home. This is about what their families are entitled to by law and what they are not getting.
And this I is just not told you about that we're gonna move. what you we're want gonna, on Obamacare, no. and it's not what the president wants on the debt ceiling. I, no, don't, don't, don't spin it on me. I just told you at the, at the top of our segment that we're going to pass uh, a, a mini CR to address those benefits. Um, we're going to look out for our military, especially those families who have made the ultimate sacrifice. We are going to do that, and we're going to do it this week. So uh, you were asking me about the larger issue of why can't people resolve this government shutdown. And we have been incredibly reasonable making a small ask. And if the president do doesn't like a small what ask we that he get rid of the central part of his health care plan that was upheld by a by the vote yeah. of a presidential Andrea. election and the United Andrea, States Supreme Court. Andrea, that, hold on, that's your spin. The, the president gave a one-year exemption spin. for listen. One, he gave a one-year exemption for businesses in regard to taxes um, and penalties in Obamacare. Everyone still can go into the exchange if they want, but they're not penalized in big business if they don't go in. We've said for the individuals, for the families, if they want to go into Obamacare, they can. But if they don't, for one year, don't tax them or penalize them, just like the way you're treating big businesses. That is fair under the law. That's all we've asked for. He's won the debate, Andrea. The exchanges are up and, and kind of running. Um, there's subsidies out there. This is a small ask going equity and equality under the law for individuals and families just like big business. And why won't he join us in Obamacare? Why wasn't Michelle Obama on, uh, on October 1st at the computer with her family signing up for Obamacare? Or Jay Carney? They have their own gold-plated health care plan well, so that they're in. And they don't, no, I'm not. I'm in Obamacare. I'm in Obamacare, Andrea. All members of Congress are in my family. The president should join us in Obamacare and the rest of America. That's, is that pretty reasonable? We should all be treated equally under the law? Why should members of Congress be in Obamacare, not the president? Explain that one. Isn't that fair? Well, I think that the... Do you, do, can can the, you defend that? Can you defend why the, the president shouldn't be in Obamacare like members of Congress and their staffs? I can't, the def I can't defend why then, the then Congress and the him. White House cannot figure out a way to reopen the government so that then our kids that question, and Andrea. their families can get Listen, the benefits that they have been... And I told you we're going to do that this week. But I want your viewers to know that this has been a reasonable approach by, on our part to go everyone equal under the law, the president and Congress and Obamacare. It's good, if it's good for America, it's good enough for the people who passed the law. And individuals for one week, uh, for one year, being treated like big businesses who came to this hill with their lobbyists and got an exemption to the taxes um, and requirements of Obamacare, give that same treatment to, uh, to, uh, uh, to, to the families in America. And again, this has nothing to do with the exchanges being open or the subsidies in the exchanges. We're not having any impact on those. They get to stand up and run. We're just saying treat uh, individuals and families like big business and have Obama go into Obamacare. That's it. No one's asked that question but John Stewart. I think the media should start doing his job. Thanks for your advice. Thank, Thank you, you, Congressman. The Supreme Court today appears divided over whether to lift the cap on campaign contributions. This morning, protesters rallied outside.